So let's look at um, then on measuring the ecosystems. So as mentioned, uh, a core thing of, of improving things is to be able to improve. And uh, not only can the ecosystems themselves can be mapped and measured, but also the progress of the startups when applying this type of framework uh, thinking on a common language. So inside an ecosystem, there are many services and many service paths. Um, the measuring helps define bottlenecks, remove overlaps, helps to create more balanced development. So not only uh, in some ecosystems, you know, the way it tends to shift that first there's a lot of early activity developments and then there's, you know, uh, later phase developments and then people get excited, but oh, if we only focus on scale ups and we only focus on that and then if we stay too long on that thinking, then they realize that we don't have enough new companies growing in their ecosystem. So there really needs to be a balance to make sure that there is enough services available throughout the whole life cycle and the funnel keeps feeding um, uh, the later phase uh, enough as well. The later phase alone, if only being active, it actually will start to decrease its effectiveness because there simply is not enough companies to develop, to grow, to invest into uh, if there is not enough uh, early phase development. So uh, when it comes to software tools, uh, the key point to remember is that it's, the software should not be considered as one package of bundle of, of things that makes things happen because we experience it from the user interface side. It's more important is what is the data and information in these systems and how that information can be made useful for everyone in the ecosystem in a way where the data remains in the hands of the rightful owners, whether that's a startup, whether that's a support service, but it can still be made shareable and uh, more standard between uh, different actors. So the easiest way to look at the whole data point is also to connect the data uh, and information into the measures, because that's the element of understanding the dynamics, what's happening, in the ecosystem. First is to understand the ecosystem as a whole. The next is to understand our ecosystem uh, and these services that are in there. And the next level from that is to understand what is actually happening in our ecosystem and inside our different services at any given time. And from that is information uh, that is more data to analyze and to, to improve uh, things. So the three key elements to focus on or to categories of measurement is one, the startup's progress and the journey throughout the ecosystem. Uh, the next is individual services, intake and output, uh, and then efficiency and feedback. So what go, how many goes in, how many matured or graduated or came out, how efficient is that process, so how much, how long is the service, how much resources is tied, uh, how uh, much is the output compared to budget put in, and then the feedback, how much benefit did uh, the, the participators consider they received compared to the expectation they had when they came in. So, and the third category is the outcome of the ecosystem development activities. So these are then when seeing that there's bottlenecks, there's missing services, is then to create a, a separate list of development activities and then measure those development activities uh, systematically and also make all of the development activities uh, visible to, to at least all the key stakeholders taking part in the ecosystem development. And when using common language and common tools, all of these types of things, KPIs, data sets, development, results, outcomes, can be more comparable within the ecosystem and between ecosystems inside one country or 
beyond between different countries. And the learnings are more applicable when there is better understanding and more common language of where those are used, how they are used, what are the tools to cater these services, and, and so forth. So, if we consider how do we measure the startup's progress, it's really easiest to understand from this kind of funnel thinking. So, how does the individual startup or how any of the startups and any services catering for specific development phase, how many applicants, um, how much is currently in a current service, uh, how much came out, and what happened after that. Did they graduate to a next service or next product? The easiest and most generic thing is trying to make startup companies more investable. So if that's the target of the service, then the, the measure is like how many get investment or how many get uh, at least um, um, improved their, their interest amongst the investors. And of course, this is not a closed pipe. This is not a closed funnel. There's companies that come from different countries. Uh, they enter a certain maturity level already. And at the same time, there's the reality that some ideas are not even meant to live forever. Some ideas never get validation. And it means that the company may disappear or it may reshape itself to pivot into something totally different. Maybe it moves a couple steps backwards or maybe the whole team dissolves and at the same time from those same people, maybe they form a new, same new team or from different people, the a different team. So this is the, the, the top level consideration of measuring the first category of startup development. Uh, first, at what phase do they cater for? And then really consider more at the, at, at the one step higher level um, to, to make it a bit more easier. Uh, it's okay to make it also more gradual to really look at um, how well do they contribute for, for, for these uh, different development phases. And then of course to measure the actual uh, service uh, site metrics uh, within the service. So this is this is the, the, the same kind of uh, description on these three different phases that was earlier uh, because of this funnel thinking. And, uh, and then to really look at the KPIs through the lens of in this formation phase is basically in the formation and ideation phase, the startups are seeding within these two different ecosystems, influenced by both ecosystems' best ingredients. But in the formation stage, the services should be focused on actually trying to inspire and get those ingredients to mix. But the measure of outcome is when there's actually a formalized startup that has created that has the potential innovation that they are committed on moving forward. So this is a very kind of clear definition to, to how to identify a success out of the formation phase. So what types of support functions here is um, and what types of uh, things can be catered for is to collect assets or sources of assets. So these are research findings IPs, uh, licensing from different companies, uh, past failed ideas, uh, startup weekend type of ideation, uh, hackathons, and so forth. Uh, promote and market this support function. Promote uh, a shareholder or pre-shareholder model. So basically that is bringing a concept or template to start formalizing. Uh, for potential startup and, and to bring um, some tools to help avoid conflicts between idea ownerships and things like that. 
and then track track marketing effectiveness via web track traffic and the, the service KPIs. So how many people took part, how many new different people took part, and so forth. So we have each of these development phases, we have these types of KPIs that we have created that are based on processes um, and, uh, and these three categories of volume, quality, velocity of re or return of investment. So these are formation services related KPIs, some example of total number of unique participants, total number of repeat participants, uh, cost of service function, number of quality ideas output, and, and so forth. And for majority of these things, we know that there are only very few services that actually measure these types of things. And, and that is, uh, on the one hand, uh, surprising, and on one hand, a missed opportunity, uh, because if measuring all of these things, that really gives a true perspective into a systematic ability to develop these functions. Startup idea related KPIs, so basically then measuring uh, the startup itself, the quality of ideas, formalized uh, volume of co-founders uh, reads, uh, volume of uh, co-founders discussions. So this goes for the team building side. So there's the idea side and then there's the team building side. And then separately, when we get to uh, commitment KPIs, basically this is like how many times the teams need to try to find match with their co-founders, where does the potential team members can be identified, a businessman, a business guy looking for a developer girl or a designer team member creator uh, looking for a business uh, team member like where do they find these team members uh, what kind of services are uh, provided for them and how often times they need to take part before they meet um, what is the number of committed teams coming out from these services like are these services successful in catering you know the meeting place uh, to facilitate and to provide, for example, general knowledge about creating a, a startup shareholder agreement uh, or creating a founder's agreement and so forth. So this just gives a perspective in the very specific types of measures to look that are all output-oriented, result-oriented, process-oriented. when the startup team themselves work, what type of things that they can be asked for or, or when providing the support, how long, how many times do they need to meet on average, uh, how many times do they need to meet with mentor or advisor helping them, uh, how many versions or discussions they need to have when trying to commit to a shareholder agreement uh, before they are ready to complete that. So once the output is that there is now committed team members and, uh, and, and they are moving to the validation phase, when they have the shareholder agreement, there's team in place that can ex execute on the uh, validation process, uh, then we go to the validation phase. And here's a snapshot of types of uh, KPIs you can have that are, again, process-based, output pay uh, based and so forth. So these are specific to um, validation services side. And again, volume, quality, uh, return of investment. Quality of potential innovation, quality of partners, trainers, uh, volume of number of team entering, volume slash quality, sources of teams, where did they come from, how did they hear about us, and, and so forth. And I think through these KPIs, it's easy to see also that just having these KPIs in place will start to drive the thinking 
of how do we cater and how do we provide our services. <clears throat> and uh, startup side, measuring the startup part of this. So startups, when they go into this uh, lean startup development phase, they basically have tons of uh, assumptions and hypotheses that they need to test. So how quickly, how many do they have, how effectively they uh, test them, uh, uh, what methods they have in place, what is the quality of the methods, and so forth. And of course, number of happy customers, uh, strong validation, number of uh, quality of paying customers, so are they are they um, um, customers who pay little? If the customers who pay a lot, uh, is there a good profitability, or is there? These are measures again to drive behavior, not only to measure the activities. And finally, when getting to the growth phase, uh, now the validation is there. It's already clear. There's perhaps ten happy customers, hundred happy customers. Now it's clear that we need to get, get this to as many customers around the world as possible. How do we do that? And it becomes uh, about growth measures and uh, measuring the support on that side. So growth service uh, KPIs, we have uh, a snapshot to give, again, volume, quality, velocity, number of introductions for investors, companies, channels, partnerships, quality of matching results from those introductions, quality of advisors helping them on their scaling phase, quality of trainings that are catered for them, uh, velocity, uh, independency, hand off to others, others take role in. So for example, when there's a lot of uh, support and mentoring on the, on the acceleration phase or validation phase, how the strategic support perspective, because most, most times, at least those in that service, they don't have a role anymore in the scaling phase because they are focused on the next batch of, uh, of the validation phase. So these handoff uh, positions where then also knowledge about strategic support can be passed on to those who continue support on the next level. Um, startup growth related KPIs then um, from the startup side, quality of go-to-market strategy, volume of inbound traffic growth, quality of inbound traffic growth, volume of output contact volume, uh, uh, time or quality of, uh, from lead to deal and, and so forth. So these are all growth metrics. So the more there is volume, the better it converts, the better, the faster it gets from lead to a paying customer and so forth. So these are the startup side measures. And there's more. So through these uh, measures, we can see that in the beginning part on the formation phase, the measures that were measured from the startups were quite few, and the KPIs to measure the support services was quite high. On the later phase, the way it shift that majority of the measures happen actually in the companies and startups as it should, and actually much less is any more on the support service side. Because now they are becoming real companies, all the things become more internalized, and it becomes less about external support and more about real market dynamics. So if we look at then measuring the ecosystems themselves, again, uh, only the things that can be measured can be improved. And uh, at ecosystem level, we also need to carry through this holistic perspective and not only looking at uh, individual uh, support services. The key here is that there needs to be certain ecosystem level measures in place and targets, and then ecosystem level shared KPIs that are um, kind of sub 
targets within the bigger ecosystem targets. And those need to be consistent uh, and shareable between different uh, types of functions. But that doesn't mean that the organizations or support functions wouldn't have their own measures, additional measures, or that they would use all of the measures. The key is that there, that there is at least a language of, of thinking about shared measures and submetrics that contribute to the main metrics. But when it comes to ecosystem development, if we think the, the government-led policy making, or if we think more of the orchestrating the different activities within the ecosystem, it becomes to understanding these all of the key actors, economic development, top-down perspective, support organizations, startups, individual people, private side, and so forth. And here, the model that was applied already at the individual development phase level was based on this approach of the holistic perspective. So there are certain things to look at, which is the, the volume, quality, velocity, and return of investment. So these are the, the shared values to improve. And then there are items to improve. So the volume of innovation, the quality of innovation, the velocity of innovation, and so forth. So this is kind of a, an ecosystem level perspective to think about. And when we put it in the frame like this, we can get a sense out of, of uh, describing any effort that we are trying to do in an ecosystem. So we can look at items. What are we trying to improve? And on one hand, what are we trying to improve about them? So if we are trying to improve the volume of innovation, are we trying to improve the, the, the volume of talent and so forth? So basically this gives again a common language to help discuss about what is the main target for our development effort. And of course, we can then put these types of things in, in more systematic way when the such language is utilized, where we can then start to track this more on the entire ecosystem level. And of course, this also goes into, into dividing that more in the, each of the development phase as well. So the target is to improve the entrepreneurship uh, quality at validation phase, or the target is to improve the velocity of um, innovation in uh, ideation phase, and so forth. So, from that perspective, it becomes more about collecting the information, collecting the data of those measures, and those statistical perspectives are helpful to any party and all the parties involved in the ecosystem. So, to collect this information, to analyzing, to, to measuring whatever needs to be measured to, to improve any specific item or area or function, uh, giving a dashboard of different activity in the startup ecosystem and making it comparable between other similar services, other cities, startup stages and startups. So if we look at the kind of the, the contribution path, when there's a public money being given to support support functions, when there's support functions provided to startups, when a startup is uh, is being built and there's an equity position with people, this gives, creates this kind of dependency path. And on the other hand, there can be requests associated with this. When someone does something, they provide some information and it can contribute back all the way through. So there's a method to, to, to making this uh, information flow as long as there's effort behind 
to try to do so. And this is where eventually the digital side can also connect to make this information flow better and enable that information flow between the existing applications and services available in the ecosystem. And then the international benchmarking can be done uh, at any level, at the service level, at the economic development level, at the policy making level, or at, at the talent development level, and so forth. And this just gives some idea to what type of answers is possible to be then having. And, uh, and, and basically this is the, is the background into, into all of the efforts and towards what should be uh, aiming towards. And all of these are very long-term, very systematic process. And, uh, and it's interesting for us when we have worked with some ecosystems for years and seeing how those ecosystems develop by putting in place, uh, starting from building the common language and then starting to do the mapping and putting measures in place and going to the digital data flow integrations and so forth. And uh, at some point, uh, it's possible to, to get a really real-time pulse about any specific activities that are happening uh, within the ecosystem. The, the key also is to make this data as open as possible. It doesn't mean that all the data is open all the time to everyone, but there's two things to consider. One is that the data should be standardized uh, to, to develop towards more standardized data to make it even possible. The next level is to create connectivity to connect that data. And then the third level is to separate decision to decide opening it up. Because creating the data models and making the connectivity doesn't yet mean that you need to push the button to say share my data. And key here, if we look at uh, the current data privacy development with the GDPR re regulation in Europe and the challenges that Facebook is facing with, uh, with the data management, it is very key that this data belongs locally to their rightful owners and that there's neutral actors locally responsible of the data flows and, uh, and responsible of data privacy of individual and also the companies and services. But still, the data is the part that has the value and makes things better. Uh, so that's why to making the data available to be shared, it just accelerates things. As a, as a snapshot, uh, for an investor to be able to request all the relevant data and the history of the data, uh, history of the company will make their due diligence process, whether they invest or not to company, 100 times faster compared to current methods of interviews and collecting data afterwards when it doesn't oftentimes even exist. So it's a big effort to pass an investor's due diligence process when none of those things were considered prior to actually starting that phase. So it's not only for measuring, but it's definitely for attracting investors and big companies, for partnerships and for channels and so forth. And the more the world gets digital, the more relevant the, the online presence and, and digital identity and information about your history and footprints online is. So the less you have data about yourself, the less relevant you are in a digital world. It's just how things develop. And the next level of this is that if there is no data, if there is no data, there is no AI that can be applied to accelerate things even further. So when the data collection is not done, it means that also AI cannot be applied. That's why all the big companies are so driven by data and they have many data collection activities uh, because they need data to train the AIs to, to become effective. And this is just the way the world is developing. 
and to understand what impacts what and why certain things need to be done, but also to understand why, why, what are the different steps to get there. So the data is also important, the history data, the different activities, the, you know, the KPIs and passing through different development phases, those are all strong indicators and the type of information that the investors are specifically interested. And there are many types of KPIs can, that can attract investors in addition to just the business or market validation. Most important is the growth rate. Uh, the growth rate and then the, the potential reoccurring revenue the, the, the sustainability of the customer base and so forth, that even if there isn't big numbers, if they are effective numbers, they are very attractive for, for investors. And at the same time, when not having those numbers and if seeing that companies are struggling with those, there's a clear effort for support functions to be developed or to be ramped up or improved to be able to improve uh, uh, startups achieving those numbers. So a few more points on, on, the, on the data for this uh, perspective, but uh, also for uh, international companies that are looking for innovation globally, they don't mind finding it anywhere in the world. They look for talent and quali quality innovations and potential innovation all over the world uh, actively. And of course, the more they can find it without physically navigating their ecosystems, the, the, the more interested they also support those efforts to be improved. That's why the big companies provide all of their platforms so widely and so richly but at the same time, they still only get the companies with very little information when they join. So, so there's many ways to make uh, these things more effective.